do the small recap for you. They did like a 10 minute recap for Anna. She was not here for everything. Um, I, I'll go over the loot again after the session, but um, basically what happened after you guys murdered the prince and everybody else either died or fled, um, they found the back door. It was actually just called the back door after going through the prince's quarters and finding an armory where they were keeping all, all these weapons and such. Um, they found a few letters. They found some golden leaves, which apparently is elf. Mom, Mom crashed. Oh. Give him a moment or two. Yeah. There he is. crashed! <laughs> No? Come on. There we go. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. picking up everything, getting anything around my house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, everybody found stuff that's not really usable outside of the mound or outside of Elfland, but they found some gold and whatnot, and some iron tip spears, mithril weapons. Um, they found some very well made silk like gowns and royal garb. And then they found the back door, which um, is a big old room with trophies. And I think there were magic arrows too. Uh, yeah, yeah, they found um, arrows. They were yeah. plus one, one d six plus savers, DC eighteen, forty two to lose d eight plus two strength. There was twelve. Of them. Um, I have those. Yeah, it has like a bunch of stuff in there. Like there's a giant table with a bowl of offal onto one side, a bunch of boning knives, and other tools for gutting animals. And the wall is just littered with fresh skins. Yeah, table size for a giant man since near the west. Um, I forgot that the walls also bear a number of trophy heads, which includes massive stags, dire wolves, and even a human or two. I don't remember reading that, but all right. At least there's no cat people. Oh. Is it me lagging or, is, or are they lagging? It probably is you from what I can tell. But I'm not sure. And it was him. It's a windy over there. I'm well wondering, Mo. I mean, it's not windy it's where windy. I'm at. Mo, is it no, windy over no, there? No, it's not. No, no, it's not. It's very humid. What degrees is it? Me. Let's see what I can do. Freaking tech issues, man. It's it never a session without happens. one. Yeah. We were so lucky. Uh, well, that's not fair. There was like one player. We played for months, and like one player kept having it and, it, and it's so frustrating. But then we never had it, and then like, and then the curse was upon us, and then we all of us were having it. I was having tech issues and. I started yeah. trying to run from oh, hotels gosh. more when I went back to work, and the hotels are like really, you never know what you're going to get. You, you might have good Wi-Fi or not. And then, um, yeah, it, uh, but yeah, I know the it's you very You never trust the hotels. Yeah. You never trust the hotels unless you know it's a good quality hotel, then you actually can somewhat twist the Wi-Fi. But make sure it's the paid Wi-Fi. 
Yeah. And that's another question. Yeah. All right. I think. I think it's working, maybe. Sounds good, sir. Okay. Yeah, so they went to the back door, they found a bunch of stuff, and just as they... just as they were looting the place, the back door swung open as they heard a horn billow out, and... um... this massive man and his three giant dogs came charging through the doorway and just began their assault on the party. Oh. And I can describe the back room if you if you would like. Um is that where Let's the is that is that where you all are now? Yes. They went through the princess quarters, they found like this little side room, the armory and whatnot. And they just went around looting. And I, I'll post a list because I don't know how great my mic is going to be now with how the internet's going. I thought you were here. But for they that. found a few things. No, he left just oh, after the prince got killed. Oh, right. Because we kind of went a little bit over time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they found a bunch of letters, they found a bunch of iron tip weapons. Along with a couple mithril weapons, found a bunch of silken like royal gowns and um, garbs and whatnot, which will fade away in the sunlight. They found some golden leaves, which apparently is Elfland currency, but it'll turn into regular gold when it hits mortal sunlight. And then they found some regular gold, um, along with some letters to and from the Queen of Elfland. And then they made their way to the back door to finish the last of their victory looting. After you guys went sort of sort of stealthy, then sort of um, tricksy, and then went full murder hobo. <laughs> that was the only option. Full circle. Okay, do you guys hear what I said up to my nephew? I'm not sure. <laughs> If I'm muted, my yeti, right? Okay, good. Whew. This yeti is finicky. Because it's already yeah. a pretty huge yeti. So, uh, yeah, they're in area 115. I don't know what's area 115, but it's area 15, the back door. And it reads... Uh, the ceiling of this chamber slopes down to the ground at its far end. Set into the curved face of the earthen wall is a large, hewn stone dolmen. Spiral patterns decorate the rock. Set in the arch formed by the stone slabs is a massive set of double doors closed with a bar that resembles a giant's shin bone. In the center of the room is a vaguely humanoid-shaped pile of stones measuring six feet high. The walls also bear a number of trophy heads, which include massive stags, dire wolves, and even a human or two. A table sized for a giant man stands near the west wall and is littered with fresh skins, bony knives, and other tools for gutting animals. A large bowl of offal, or offal, sits on the floor beside it. And then they went through a bunch of loading and not a whole lot. They found like a couple of skins that are worth a few gold or could help with um, some spells and whatnot, as we found out. And then the sound of a great horn breaks the peace of fairy here on the threshold between worlds. Suddenly, a trio of hounds, great mastiffs as large as ponies, come howling and barking through the doorway behind uh, doorway. Behind them starts an eight-foot-tall man, his body covered with hair like hanging moss, 
and his skin a deep green as the heart of the forest. A rack of great antlers crowns his head, and he bears a spear in one hand and a horn in the other. And that is that is where we stopped last time at Fila for us. Not not too much. We stopped right before this final fight. <laughs> Sorry, my, my wife was kind enough to just come check on me. She didn't realize I was playing a game. Um, okay, so uh, there's uh, uh, so we're fighting? The fight is just about to start from what I'm understanding. I missed the yeah. last couple of sentences because where she came in. He kind of just burst in on oh, us. Okay. Just yeah, now. there's a fight about to happen. We paused right before it. The bunch... It's against the party we, I mean, um, versus giant fairy masters and the hunter. We, uh, please, uh, friend, uh, there's no reason to, to fight. The, the days of the King of Elfland are upon us again. He, uh, he calls his dogs to, uh, to, uh, he halts his dogs with a growl and says, But there is traitors to your own kind. I can smell the blood of the prince on your hands. On all your hands. And for that, for betraying the court, for betraying her, you all must die. Well, I, I never betrayed her. I never served her in the first place. I never served her either. I see that, uh... I see that we don't serve the same people. So perhaps you were right. I draw out my mithril sword. My eyes turn into a kaleidoscope. Really? I Indeed? draw out the as I cast sword. Get the Lotus Stare. Awesome. Try to hypnotize <laughs> this dude. Alright, yeah, go ahead. You can try. We're gonna roll for initiative. I mean I'm holding the Prince of Sword too, so Yeah. Look, that one. Not cricket oh, no. just like casually just like okay, prepare Simming preparation stakes to Oh no. I got a 15. Oh man. They got a 3. <laughs> I got a, a nat 20. Ooh! I got a 5. <laughs> First nat 20 of the session. Yes, indeed. And Ross got the first one. Okay. That's all. <laughs> Balance. Perfectly. So we got a. Should be. Okay. So let's see here. We got Caleb with a twenty. A cricket with a fifteen. Um. Let's see, Hearn and Hearn and his dogs got a three. Um uh, Skomak got a five, is that right? Yep. And Lodakai got a one? I got a third thirteen. Okay. Alright. And then what did Finner get? Three. Three. Alright, awesome. Looking good. Alright, so KF, what do you want to do? I'm gonna use my unicorn horn sword against the guy. It's Hearn himself, alright. Yep. He's got three dogs in front of him. 
as they just step through the doorway. So he's kind of blocked off, and I can't attack him, or what? He's he's blocked off, unless you want to give the okay, uh, dog. Whichever dog's closest to me, then. All right. Swing away. Okay. Twenty-two for to hit. Yeah, and are they lawful or chaotic or unlawful? Yeah. All the nurses, every nurse does not say, so I'm going to say neutral. Neutral, okay. So then that's 1d6. And, um, I and that's a 4. Yeah, man, nice. You run up and you stab the nearest dog through the chest and it howls in pain. Jeez. Uh, Cricket. Don't one shot everybody, okay? What do you do now? Okay, I'm gonna try not to. Uh, how far away is the dude first from me? Approximately. So. Him. How far away am I from the main dude? Uh, you are about... Everybody's about 20 feet away from him. And 15 feet away from his pack of dogs. Which are acting as a living, breathing, biting wall. Uh, blocking any attacks to him. Is he currently holding any weapons? Because the picture shows him holding a lance or a spear. Sorry, I did not hear you. It keeps breaking up. Is he holding a weapon? Yeah, he's holding a spear. Okay. I'm going I'm to move 20 feet towards him and proceed to do a disarming deed. Hopefully it goes off. Or else it's going to just be pure damage. Oh yeah. When I do my damage, I get a plus 1d6. Due to my Hawaiian shirt. Because <laughs> I forgot that the last time. Shoot, I got a 6. Plus the d dice, it would be 8. Sorry, everything's breaking up. Hold on a second. Oh man. What if I need Wait, that's wait, I've got strength modifier. Whoops. <laughs> so it's technically a ten. Yeah. Could you repeat that, please? I technically Strength modifier and plus the deed dice to do to how it works. It should be rolled a ten, but my deed does not go off. I'm sorry. Can anybody else hear her? It keeps breaking yeah. up really, really bad. Yeah. No, I I can yeah. hear her. Yeah. She, she said she got a ten to attack. Um, and no deed dice. My deed didn't go off. Oh, yeah, it didn't go off. Can you hear us? I think he's about to drop off again. Because depending on what the weather is over there, it was pretty hot. It could be affecting the tower. I mean, I uh, cell towers. Tower. Oh, yeah. 
Or the form of internet. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, because, like, here in town, it's not bad at all. You're also in Phoenix? Uh, Wilcox. Same general area as you do is. Uh, what's the temperature over there? Because that can be a given of what's going on. And I knew it! He was gonna jump off of her a moment. <laughs> um, it's about 96. Ooh. I can With a humidity cause minor of 27 percent. <laughs> it could cause minor problems with the uh, temperature. Yeah. Cause, yeah, uh, and then the humidity is like 27 percent, so it's fairly humid too. Oh, it's pretty humid here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I live in Hawaii. I plan to. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, you can continue with how the climates are around Hawaii, the main big island. Hawaii, Hawaii. <laughs> As the uh, natives call the big island Kona. I don't know why ever I can hear Kaleth and everybody fine, but when it comes to um, Ross and Anna, I keep saying unstable internet on their picture. Interesting. Yeah. No. I oh. Have, okay. I think yeah, that's, everything's uh, fine on my side. Yeah, I think that's latency through the Discord. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think it might. Be. Might try. You might try to turn video off. It might be that frogging him up. Okay. Oh man, good, good times. Well, yeah, time most of us here with video. I don't want to have to turn off video. Yeah, I don't know if that, if that helps out. It's the two people with video on. Yeah, actually, okay. That's a good <laughs> That's point. Okay. Let's take that out for it. Oh yeah, my little icon I made by hand if you want to know. I literally have the paper f paper one. That's great. Sorry about that, smack to the Yeti. Because I have the paper one that literally took time to even do. For my little icon. <laughs> Patience. Scissors, exacto knife, a bit of tape. Nice. Yeah. Did that help any? Yeah. Did that help? Yes, that helped them a lot. Everybody's coming oh, yeah. perfectly clear. Interesting. Well. As I said, yeah, does it hit? Yeah. If he's got like a low beam wind, where he's at, that video hog him up probably. Right, it shouldn't gonna... though. But. That's a Discord thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ba back to where we were. Uh, what'd you get for your attack, Cricket? It would have been a 10 for attack, but my deed doesn't go off. Okay, and that was to hit, right? Yes. And you were hitting... To do, I was trying to do a disarming deed, and I was trying to hit the main big dude that was 20 feet away. That does not hit. Barely. <sighs> yes. Um, all right. Then we go to uh, Lodokai. Ah, uh, yes. Staring past his meat wall of dogs and into his eyes. <laughs> that turned into a kaleidoscope. And let's all see right. what happens here. Uh, make eye contact with one target. Force it to stare into swirling hypnotic gaze. We'll save, and as long as I concentrate, he's immobile. Oh, man. All right. Let's see if he saves. Does a 15 pass? Are you asking? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. Oh. AC plus armor level. Save versus will versus spell check DC. Spell oh. check DC is what what I rolled? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, that's a 14, so he made it. Ah. Oh. Yeah, he looks... You make eye contact with him for a few brief... Like, a, for maybe a full minute. 
then he shakes his head as if it was one of those bad uh oh man what am i trying to say <laughs> like you guys Hangover? caught each other no caught each other's <laughs> eyes across the the bar in the middle of the night stare down, <laughs> stare down. <laughs> a romantic stare down <laughs> <laughs> Give finger to Grant Taylor before this. <laughs> All right, and then it's um, I guess I'm, it's their turn, right? I don't think it's Lodokai next or Skomak next. What did they get? They got a, they got a five. I got a five. All right. Uh, what does that uh, mean? Uh, I'll let you go first. Okay. I'm gonna run toward 15 feet. That should be close enough to attack, I believe. It is. And I'm gonna go after the guy with the spear. I'm okay. also gonna try to disarm him. <laughs> All right. You wise or not? <laughs> I don't That's know if a three wise. goes off. It does. Three or higher goes off on these. Does he as A C fourteen does have a hit? That does hit. Yeah, I did twelve damage with my plus three sword. Oh man. Did the deed go off with the three? I think it did. I think it did. Yes, it does. Cause for deeds you have to three or better to land a deed. Yes. As I end up reading it from my sexy book of hard coveredness. <laughs> it's luxurious. Oh, I have a it's shield bash here. Works. Yeah, don't forget to use your dwarven shield bash. Oh. Wait, was that an attack or that was an attack? Twelve does it hit? Does it? Um, uh, you're still going after Hearn, the man. Yes. Uh, let me double check. I believe it does not. Okay. All right. It's their turn. Um. But your deed went off, so he's disarmed. So. Let's see here. He is going to stick his mass, all of his mastiffs, onto Caleb. There it is. So that's a five and four. Let's see here. Let's go to no bonuses. Actually, there is. Okay. So it does a 19, 20, and 22 hit. And that's just the AC, or is that the AC plus the armor? That that's that's your that's that's your armor. That's your armor points all together. C plus armor. So AC plus armor would be 21. Yeah. So I don't think any of those hit. Um, I think that I think the last one hits. Only one hit gets through because it was 19, 20, and 22. 22. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it says with the three that there's a 50 percent chance the weapon stopped out of reach. Wow. Oh. Ooh, roll a d100%. Or, yeah, d percentage. Hey. All right. Uh, the last bite does. Yes, six points of damage. Jeez. So it was, it was 20. It's knocked out of reach, I guess. That's not out of reach, yeah. Below 50 succeeds, above 50 it fails, so... Nice. It's not out of reach. And then Hearn the Hunter, since he has no spear... He is just going to use his movement to go after his spear and to pick it up. Let's see if he actually does it. Okay. Yeah, he, he gets his spear back, but that takes him about... 10 feet into the room 
towards the large table. I know that there's a map for the mound again. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, so that he knocked it off to the right. And he has to go run and pick it up while his dogs were attacking Caleb. And now it's on to Fenric. What do you do? I cast, um, uh, but, 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 I cast, um, gosh darn it, where is it? Scorching Ray. I cast Scorching Ray at one of the dogs. Um, I got a, uh, 16 plus one is, uh, 17 plus four is 21. So, uh, Blackjack. Yeah. It uh, looks like a uh, <clears throat> flaming bullet shoot out of my hands, and um, I cast two rays, and I'll just do it. I don't like have the picture. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just gonna try to nuke one of these dogs. I'm gonna try. So it's all right. D10 plus caster level damage. So I got 10 damage plus. Uh, Eight damage. Um, and they also have to make a reflex saver. They take d6 damage of fire each turn. Well, they failed a reflex save, so describe how you kill one of these dogs. I think um, my. Uh, I just. It, it, it looks exactly like that picture, actually. Which. Uh, the picture right. from the book where you have the. Uh, the wizard Everybody. shooting a thing out of his hand at the dog. Oh, yeah. Oh man! And then he's just roasty toasty. He's a nice. scorched, blackened thing now. Nice. All oh, right. You made a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was terrible. Singed <laughs> fur and skin, yes, dead on the floor. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, all right, I, I believe that's everybody. So we're going back to the top of the round with Kayla. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna go for the dogs again with the same weapon. Matt is a nineteen to hit. A nineteen to hit? Yeah, that hit. Okay. We're looking to beat an AC of 12. Okay, and that's six points of damage. Is that the same dog that you hit? Yep. Mm, yeah, describe how you kill it. So, I bring the unicorn horn short sword down at an angle and lob its head off. Ooh. Nice. All right. That's two massives down. One more to go with um with the uh, cricket. What do you do? Okay. From what I am understanding, we still have a dog. Yep. And a dude. That is I correct. Take ten feet of movement to get to him because he moved ten feet away to get his spear. Yes. I'm going to try to do a disarming, uh, was it, attack on him again for D dice. Right. Disarm him again after picking up his spear. Like, move, then disarm. Push, push, push. Attack. Oh my. <laughs> Give me the weapon away. He's like, you get it? Don't touch you. <laughs> Let's see. Let it go off. The D does go off, and... 16 or 19. Okay, one sec. I have to find the other number because I either rolled a 16 or a 19 on this and I'm not sure. Hold on, where's my 16? Ah, uh, rolled a 16 plus strength modifier. That's 18. Uh, 
I got up to 18 plus the strength modifier plus D dice, which is 5, so it went off. Is that the hit or for damage? That's what I'm asking. For hit. Okay, it hits. His AC is 14. Okay, since the deed did go off, I'm first going to read off the deed before I roll out the damage. Uh, one minute. A humanoid creature with a Monday weapon has automatically surrendered. Magical weapon is disarmed later. I will reach da -da -da, negative four penalty. He sundered his weapon. It's broken. Yeah. Okay, well, there's no more spirit to worry about. I got up to the damage. Okay. <laughs> so, if I remember right. Okay, let me roll it out because I get a d6 added because I'm a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Six extra, uh, was it? It's gonna be six damage. Six That's damage. It's, uh, yeah, six damage with my Nagi with... I mean, Nagi Nata. And your D die, which is, was a five, uh, so that's 11 yeah. points damage. Oof, okay, yeah. yeah. Certain bad. So yeah, you ran up and you broke his spear into two, and with a second swing, went and Cut him up pretty good. Jeez. Um. Um. <laughs> hey, uh, uh Skomat. Oh, wait. Oh, Lodokai. No, my D. I mean, my crit to me. Yeah, Lodokai. Off. I need 19 or 20. <laughs> Lodokai, what do you do? Can I get a shot off on that, um, uh, dog? Yeah. <laughs> well then, <laughs> misfire. Uh oh. Nah, no, oh no. I rolled a ten. I missed. Oof. Okay. Dang. So we have a dog and the other guy, right? Yeah, and they're the dog got. Yeah, so they're both hurting pretty bad. So it's it's completely up to you who you want to fight. Yeah, I'd rather go after the dog. Try to uh, try to knock it down. All right. Well, no, I'm just gonna try to kill it. <laughs> okay. Intent. Yeah, my deep one. I got off anyway. So. <laughs> this is murderous intent with weapon. No special teams. <laughs> Uh, does the ten hit? Uh, ten does not hit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I missed it. Oh man. Man. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the mastiff is going after Caleb. Oh gosh. And it, it, it critically misses, and it uses its movement to flee towards the door. Kern, on the other hand, is going to try and. Do an unarmed strike against Cricket. Oh, I and forgot my shield bash. Yeah. Keep forgetting about that shield bash. He misses, and then he spends the rest of his movement heading back towards the door. The 13 hits the dog? Yes, the 13 hits the dog. Oh, my shield bash hits the Okay. Let's wreck on that. Let's do your shield bash. Ah, uh, what damage? Okay, yeah, you, you daze the dog, which makes it miss Caleb, and uh, they are fleeing towards the door. So now it is up to Fenric and what he does to seal the deal. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try Scorching Ray again. Okay. You got two very hurt beings trying to escape combat through the door. Okay, I definitely, I think I'm going to try to stop Hearn, because uh, we don't want people to, although the Feyhounds are probably intelligent, but anyways, 14 plus 4 is 18 for Scorching Ray. Uh, They're in a line, though, huh? 
Yeah, yeah, going I'm, through the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I might be able to shoot both, yeah. Uh, let's see, I got 18, so that's... No, it's just one target, unfortunately. I'm not... <laughs> excuse me. I'm not going to spell burn. Uh, so that's uh, D8 plus caster level damage. Uh, so D8 plus 4 against turn. Oh no. 6 points of damage. And then uh, reflex save or fire. Well... You just you can describe your kill because that's all he had left. Oh well, I uh, he's fleeing through the door, and I uh, raise my hand um, again, like that the wizard in the picture, and I um, uh, I, I scorch him across the back, and, and he, uh, his body disintegrates, and before his eyes, you know, as he uh, he flees and he falls to the ground, a lump of ash. Ooh. Nice. That was the last of Hearn, the hunter, the court second hand. Now, can I try to attack that last dog before it gets through the door? Yeah, everybody can try and attack it. Okay. Okay. I mean, it has two hit points. 18 to hit? Yeah, that yep. hits. He's got two hit points left, so. Yeah, I have And I do five points of damage, so. It dead. Nice. It, it's dead. <laughs> we left and again, no I witnesses. just chopped his head right off. <laughs> Except for uh, Prince Stinky Butt and the moles who went out the other yeah. door into the mortal realm. Did, Her did Hearn's horn survive? Yes, it did. Oh. Is it special? Uh, oh, I'll hand that it. to Fenric. Maybe he'll know what to do with it. Um, thank you, uh, my friend. I, uh, I'm not sure about this. The, uh, the unseely court, it's, their ways are unknown to me. Uh, perhaps we should hang on to uh, we should keep this with us until until we can learn more. I think our our efforts to free the the king of Elfland will it may take some time. Hello, and what's through the door? Like you said, they were going through it. So what do we see on the other side? Yes, actually, I was gonna see. All right, yeah, here it is. Um, so the doors are open allowing you the first glimpse of the twilight lands beyond them. Purple skies hang over a dusky landscape filled with flowers with scents you've never smelled before. Fireflies of blue dance in the evening's beginning and the vista nearly makes your heart break with beauty. Um, I can't find the rest of it because it's broken up here. But there was like a, uh, aromas of amazing scents, known and unknown, like assail all of your senses. And uh, there was something else, but it's, it's lost. It's lost inside the pages. We see that big castle off in the distance. No, just a sea of forests. A sea and a uh, sea of forest and a stone road leading from the door to whatever lays beyond. Um, is it too late? Perhaps the moment has passed for us to return to the humans and let them know that their problems are solved. Maybe it is. I don't know. Time moves strangely with those close to Elfland. You could if you'd wish. Um, real quick, before we either go through the door or backtrack, um, are those Mastiff heads worth anything that I chopped off? Uh, 
Probably not to the humans. Okay. To the normal farm folk who just wanted the the mystery of the shadows over Aang um, solved. Okay. Don't we need to do something else in Elfland, like get a Didn't flower we... or something? We need to pick daisies for the mystics. Yeah. Yeah. We but... need to pick daisies, and I think we had a letter we were supposed to deliver. Well, that was in Sigil, but then we decided we were going to try to liberate Elfland from the clutches of the Queen of Elfland and the Unsealed Court. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, for 50 gold pieces, perhaps the time has passed and we just step on through the door into the other world. Okay. Yeah, yeah just playing the motion. Game. This time, it, this is the first time Cricket sees Skull Mac without a beard. Is like, huh? What? What happened to your <laughs> Poor beard? Skull Mac. Oh no! Ah, oh, they burned it off. Look at the hell. beard. We're gonna have sex. Yes, I'm so evil. It's unrecognizable. Pulls up the head, pop, takes the hand, covers the bottom half of your face. Oh, there those, we go. It's one of those baby uh, like things where now he looks like the Gerber baby. You can see it as long as the beard was Very somewhere. angry baby. <laughs> the angry baby. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Well, among the letters, as you step through threshold to finish off this... Uh, Keep in mind, this was a level one module, which took us six, six sessions, I'd say, maybe, <laughs> to do. Um, the oldest one among them reads, yeah, uh, the Queen of Elfland's letter. This is, um, my beloved son. Oh, I Scourge think I have of this. Shadows. Ooh. Here you go. You guys can uh, read it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but go ahead and read it, Dwayne. I just have the. Okay. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, my beloved son, Scourge of Shadows and Master of Misery, attend to your mother and queen. Your hated father has been usurped. And I once again rule Elfland. Unlike your patriarch, I see no need to pardon those lowly mortals who dwell beyond the Ivy Mound. Their duke may be dead, but his crime is not forgotten. The king may have forgiven them, but I do not. You must act in my stead. I charge you to reopen the Ivy Mound and unleash all manner of misery upon the mortals. I trust you will find suitable measures to remind them why they should rightfully fear Elfland. I've once more extended the borders of Fairy to the mortal realm, and opening the mound anew will be a trivial matter. I hereby grant you permission to take such guards, courtiers, assistants, and lackeys as needed to fulfill this task. I even give you leave to employ the huntsman and his pack if you so desire. A small gift of affection from my lovely boy. See you uphold your duties to your mother and your queen. I shall be wroth if you fail me. A cell adjoining your fathers and your sisters awaits you as a reward for displeasing me. Her Majesty, the Queen of Elfland. Oh, Ooh. my friends, this is both good portent and ill. For it tells us that just with the Queen of Elfland, in a cell awaits the king and his daughter. So now we know where they are. Yes. We do. Yes. And I say we need to free them. Jailbreak. 
Indeed. Yes, we should free the king. I think we must if we care about Aerith and the mortals, for the Queen of Elfland will never stop and pouring her vindication on the mortal realms. Now that the the line between Elfland and the mortal world is open. Oh, it's only 721. Okay, I, feel so we we get... should, uh, I feel we should accomplish this quickly so uh, we can get back to the stairs. Shall, should we fully kill her as we killed her son? Or shall we just try to imprison her? I suppose we'll that will... We get the king out. That'll probably solve it right there. Indeed. And... I suppose that will become clear once we see the the gates of their palace. Do you know the way to get there? I look ahead and, you know, there's just like the one road. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and I, I'm, I motion toward the road. All roads lead to the fortress. And so they say. They got horses here? Hmm. We, uh, we ride upon mounts. Probably. Uh, but, uh, but, but not horses, usually. Perhaps we can find some mounts. Oftentimes, here in Elfland, it's proper to come into a partnership with the mount, offer them something in return, and bond with them. So, perhaps that opportunity will come. For now, I suggest that we walk the path through the forest to the palace, the road. Yes. I'm wearing a uh, hood over my head, covering my ears. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'll be able to hide what I am. You're not slender enough to pass off as an elf child. Halfling? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what? Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure for cricket. It's just like. I do mostly cover up. She's a, uh, I can she's be a quite obvious. Death. We can perhaps uh, claim that uh, that Skomak is our property here in Elfland. Uh, forgive me, my friend, but with the rule of the Unsealy Court prevailing over the lands, I suspect that it may not be as kind of a place as it would have been in other seasons. But... I believe that Lodakai is right uh, to hide his ears, for it seems that uh, the queen has a special hatred for his kind. And geez. Yeah. It's like a broader version of John Wick. They killed her unicorn. Yeah. Um. I, I thought we did that. We did kill the unicorn. Um. Is there anyone who could heal me as we travel? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I can lay on hands. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, let yeah. me see. Make a roll here. You have a lot of disfavor, don't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, four, five. Wait. Wait. I got it here. How many penalties? Six. <laughs> yeah, oh. that's, that's awful. <laughs> How do you remove that? You... Uh, you have to do either off, like a great significant offering, oh, okay. or go to a ritual area where you take a pass to get rid of it. Oh, okay. You ready? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, oh, so I rolled right. a one, and my disfavor is six. <laughs> oh. oh. Man. What, is, what happened? Yeah, I gotta figure out how to do this. 
I think, I think if you roll the one again, with all of that, don't you roll on the disfavor page? Or am I wrong? I think I that... roll on the disfavor, yeah, let me see here. Oh, man. Who is your god? That's goddess of nature. God. Ooh. <laughs> God, grumpy goddess. <laughs> ah. I thought she's of nature, so we can't give her flowers and stuff, because that's technically the reverse league of doing stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> Because it's a goddess of nature, and you try to give her cut fresh flowers, it's not going to be valuable. That's equal to no. Read. Okay, disapproval. <laughs> uh, cleric, uh, let's see, on a one. Uh, one d4 for every point on the spell check. Ooh. He would roll 1d4. If he rolled a natural 4 and that counted as disapproval, he would roll 4d4. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Darn. Um, yeah. So I Dude. roll 6d4? Yeah. I would, I would take... That's what the rules said. Now let's go to dis. I think I'm gonna max this thing out. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. One twenty-two. Let's see what you get. Seventeen. That is cleric loses access to one d four plus one spells randomly. Spells cannot be cast for the next twenty-four hours. Jeez. All right. So roll your D four and let's see. I roll a D four. No, he does. Okay. Two spells. Two spells. All right. So your first and your last spell are lost. D detect uh, evil and snake charm. Dang it. So you still technically have Lee on hands. So we yes. still have a healer. <laughs> yeah, Lee on hands can't be lost. That's just built into the Those class. Those spells are lost for 24 hours. Yep. Can use them for a day. But all right, yeah. And, uh, you and guys... my disfavor goes to 1-7. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, you're gonna have to do. I have to rest um, for a while. Yeah, you know, it, this always came across to me as like really overpowered. There was a period where mine and your character, Ron, like you were a halfling and you had luck, and I was a cleric, and I had lay on hands, and we were just like an in invincible tank duo. But, oh yeah. But like, I'm surprised that like this. Uh, it balances out like it's really punishing if you take the risk of trying to lay on hands or something your disfavor goes up like it's not going to be easy to try to get that back so that's um and then now you have to like go on adventures to try to get it back too yeah it's rough mm -hmm. yeah it can start to add up fast like Sacrifice I how uh francois had to do <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And you guys strike out onto the road. Um, as you depart the mound, you see the doors close behind you as the little door knocker, uh, made of stone, the six foot tall stone, uh, animate. Animate, animate stone person closes the door, and you hear the giant shin bone lock uh, shift into place. They're trying and to the door, up. Yeah. And the door shimmers. Shimmers and uh, vanishes before your very eyes. 
most likely turning invisible. Um, and then, yeah. uh, you guys make your way out. It's sunset, so it's, it's, uh, I would say early evening, the best you can guess, and, uh, guess follow the road for at least a couple of hours before it gets too dark for Lodokai to see. Um... Uh, would you guys like to camp and rest out, or would you guys do you guys want to push ahead? I'd like to uh, rest up so that I can get some health back through that way. What's your alignment? Chaotic. All right, so you are one dice. No, one hit dice is what you get back. And which die is my hit die? It's a six. D6. D6? Okay. That's a six. Nice. Yeah. So you got, you got nice. four hit dice back. That's not bad. Thank you. Um, uh, what would you guys like to do? Do you all just want to camp out, get some hit points back, and is there is there like uh, some kind of biolumin as the hold on, sorry, as the twilight begins to dim, is there like a like a bioluminescent plant somewhere somewhere nearby, some kind of bioluminescent insect or plant? Actually, yes. Besides the blue fireflies, some of the grass lining the road is actually. Um, luminescent as it glows gold and green and even purple illuminating the road. Okay, I... Are there any daisies? I take a, like a jar um, and rather than starting a campfire, I gather all these bugs and grass and make a whole kind of disco kaleidoscopic lighting uh, for the campsite. Vineyard, I have a freaking lantern. Why didn't you ask? I thought that our friends would provide a beauty to our camp. I do agree with that. All right. That's probably uh, less attraction to the area. Are there any, uh, okay. any daisies around here? There is no daisies. Oh, okay. Uh, the last you heard before you actually set out on this trip was that the daisies are in the duke, or not the duke, the king's personal um, oh. garden. Did like, you just say the daisy dukes? <laughs> no. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, my thing is going on. Okay. Turn that up. What, what, what? There we go. That should be a lot better. Yeah, but the daisies are in the Duke's personal garden in in the castle. The Duke or the King? The the King, the King. Okay. Same difference. The daisies are in the King's personal garden. Ulu. Um. Okay, so yeah. Um, are you guys gonna set up a watch or no? That that's the last question I got. Cricket will be willing to take watch, if need be. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a watch, too. So everybody can sleep. Alright. And, uh, yeah, you guys take turns um, resting and hosting a watch. Um, nothing happens until daybreak. When walking along, or uh, nearby, sorry, not walking along, but nearby just off the road, uh, further off the road than you guys are, you can hear two fays bickering over what sounds like a dying creature. 
Um, you can hear them yelling over who who's going to take the prey, or maybe they're going to split up the prey because it's stuck in a trap. That one of them, or actually supposedly both of them made, but the other one's claiming the other one stole it. And uh, they want to take it. They each want to take a part of this animal back as a trophy. Our, and uh, who's who's awake? Um, let's see here. Is it Cricket or the other one? <laughs> it would actually be Skomac on his watch. Uh, I don't think Skomac cares. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But that Do might... you bring? Yeah, I might wake Fenric up. Fenric, you're a. Uh... Some of your kind are over there arguing. Oh. Over some kind of animal. Uh, I don't know. I look over there and I see that they're arguing over some bauble, and I'm like, "Oh no, Skomak, we have to leave." Okay. This is this is how the wars begin in fairy in uh, in Elfland. By tomorrow. Some Hatfield McCoy stuff. <laughs> What's that? It's some Hatfield McCoy stuff happening right here. Yeah, they'll, they'll, by by tomorrow, this entire countryside could be littered with bodies. Well, it won't be littered with ours. Yes. Because we're not going to be here. We'll have to try to find some other place to rest, I'm afraid. You said it was uh, at morning, right? Or... Yes, it's uh, early morning when all of this happened. So oh. the sun is just coming over, bright, lighting everything up. Caleb and I could <laughs> attempt to try to mediate, but it would be perilous. It could mean it could cost us our lives. At least it's just a animal, wow. Yes. So have many of the wars began here in Elfland. So you want to go speak to them, or are you guys getting out of here? Kalith, uh, awaken Kalith. Observe, there are uh, two fairy kind, and they are in argument over which should have uh, uh, an animal that they uh, that they have ensnared. Um, we could propose a a game of chance or a riddle to mediate. Uh, as you know, that could be a life or death matter, though. Or we could leave at once and try to spirit away so that they, they don't see us, hopefully. Sorry, what kind of animal is it? Um, yeah, let me describe it. So just off in a slight clearing, maybe 40 feet, 50 feet away, um, you can see these two elves bickering. One looks paler and wearing, like, dark huntsman garb. And the other one is a bit lighter, maybe uh, fuller of color. And he's also wearing the garb of a hunter. And in between them, on probably its last breaths at this point, is what appears to be a um, multicolored badger in, in a bear trap. Oh, okay. And, uh, and they're both pointing in it, bickering in their own thick elvish accents about who's getting it and who actually um, who killed it first. I was making sure it wasn't like a human or something. It, no, nevertheless, <laughs> oh, if we could free the badger, they it may help us on our journey. As well. That's true. Maybe. Okay. Uh, I want to rescue that badger. All right. 
Uh, you haven't woken up Cricket yet from the first watch. <laughs> I'm gonna like everybody up though. Okay. Now that we decided to do something about it. What's going on? You'll need to find some <laughs> breach and, and etiquette, uh, some some way in which they are both false, uh, in, in order for them to depart. Otherwise, you'll have to propose on your life a, a new game of chance or a riddle or something okay. like that. Okay. Could you summon a second animal? Aha. Perhaps. Indeed. Um, yeah, perhaps you could summon several of them. Yes, I could attempt to summon some badgers. Some multicolored badgers, in fact. Can I try to do that, Glenn? Yeah, you can try that. Okay. Um... I got a uh, 17 plus 4 is 21, so I got, um, what, how many hit dice are these multicolored badgers? Uh, they have the same hit dice as a regular badger, so that's what, like a hit, one hit dice, I believe? Okay, I, I summoned four multicolored badgers and I hand one out to everybody. <laughs> nice. All right. What, what's the play of um, well, from what I can understand, we can suggest a trade for the freedom of the badger they have, and thus we give each of them the equal, the most equally of the badgers to each, to each, no more, no less, and that's it. Which uh, is, is the badger dead? The badger is dead at this point. Yes. Oh, oh. no. Okay. Oh. But they well, both to... can get trophies because they can get two of them from us instead of just the one. Uh, and thus we can rebury the one that was trapped back to its back into Elfland. It shall cycle again. Am I not correct, Fenric? Yes, I think uh, since its coat is of so many colors, we could release it again into the starlight. If these die, they disappear, right? I think so. I... You're going to be angry. <laughs> so as soon as we should tell them, do not kill until we leave. After the ceremony with the one that is trapped in the trap. So by the time we get a good distance away, let's continue on our drive rolls in a hasty manner. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can we actually, can I cast enlarge on the ones that, uh, Henrik, uh, uh, materialized and have us just ride them away instead of interfering at this point? Ah. Because what I really wanted to do was save it before it died, but because it's now dead, it might be better for us to just try to sneak on by. Hmm. That sounds cool. Try the rival. <laughs> Plus, there's five of us and only four of those. So if I cast in large, they should become big enough that at least two people can ride each. Yeah, and then we just uh, try to ride them away as fast as possible. Right. And then, hey, we have our mounts. Yeah. True. Well, let me see how long it won't last too long, but... Um... Should be at least long enough to get us out of the way. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention. I, I also, I uh, I ignite in a, uh, a flickering wizardly fire all around me when I cast this spell. 
So does that mean they see us anyway? No, they're too engrossed in arguing amongst themselves. Okay. Then I will cast that in large. I'm gonna put down the battery that I'm holding. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Does an 18 enlarge? Uh, yes. Let's look at the result. Sorry. Um... <laughs> Come on, and where you go? Like one of the first beauty to scribble, so it should be right. Anything else? From person, hand grip, touch, hand spray, touching pod, comprehend languages and stuff. Enlarge, uh, 18. It and does the targets the target increases in size by fifty percent, conferring a plus two bonus to attacks, damage, and AC due to greater size and strength. So you can only um person per badger due to the size. Yeah, it's only one target. So one person or one badger. So are the badgers normally big enough to carry at least one of us? No, they're about the size of a regular badger. Well, okay. So that does not do what I was hoping it would do then. Um, well, we could just give it a really big badger. Yeah, we'll have one big, bigger badger, but it won't be big enough for any of us to ride, even if it had only 50% its normal size. Like, plus 50%, I should say. Um, normal size plus 50%, because they're not big to begin with. <laughs> so, that's like this now the size of a medium-sized dog. Maybe a large dog. <laughs> yeah. So, definitely did not do what I was wanting it to do. Um... Okay, so... Huh. We could, um... Uh, take the risk of negotiating for that badger, but it would bring a curse on us because the, the two elves would not forget uh, our betrayal. Uh, or we could simply leave because this, this could quickly I, become a war. I, I vote we leave. Yeah. Say, leave. So, so we we scamper down the road. We have these giant, multicolored badgers that are just kind of waddling yeah. along with us for two hours. Yeah. For two Ooh. hours. Oh, cool. Oh man. Yeah, and so you guys do. You guys pack up your packs as quietly as you can and leave the bickering fay to themselves. And for hours, you travel down this road. Um, with nothing but sounds of mm, different birds and other exotic creatures that you have not heard in the mortal realm. Um, let's see here. Yes. Yes. During the middle of your journey, you do begin to see a castle off in the distance as you crest a hill and, uh, See that the road snakes ever forward, um, zigzagging between the thick canopy of the forest and eventually making its way to this castle um, set amongst a, well, a mountain. I don't know why I was going to say stone mountain, but a mountain. Um, and as soon as you guys begin your descent, the badgers vanish and soon on your travels hey. you see a young fae standing um, on a tree branch looking up to the sky 
it appears he's arguing with something in the sky as he says that yes you are going to be named and no if you burn me i'm going to curse you and make sure you are not among your cousins and brethren much longer just a young elf boy is the young elf boy can we discern what he is sorry go ahead uh, is he a frost elf um no he looks like a uh just a normal elf i would say if we we're gonna make differences here you'd look like a high elf much more full of color than a frost elf what's he arguing with um, listening for a few more moments, it seems like he's in an argument with a star who refuses to be named. Oh. And yeah, judging from the conversation, it seems the star is threatening to burn him, and he's threatening to curse the star from the sky. I feel like the star is going to win this one. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Just want to wait and see how it plays out. <laughs> yeah, or just keep going. I kind of want to see how this all plays out. Is there any way we can help him? You know, I don't know. That's up to you guys. Well, for one thing, um, I look at his gaze and I look up and can I pick out the star that he's looking at? Yes, it's actually a bright orange star that is illuminated. Oh, you can see it amongst the blue, the blue bright sky, actually, as it's twinkling, as it speaks to him. Okay. Um, have I spoken to the star before in my past? Oh, let's see here. No, actually, you have not. Hmm. Mm, okay. This, uh, this young... Have I? Oh, sorry, go ahead, sir. Have I spoken to this bar in the past? Oh, uh, let me take a look. <sighs> no. No, apparently <laughs> not. You guys don't speak to stars when you, you elves were children. Huh. Oh, uh, this, this young elf, okay. he, uh... He commits a terrible crime. It is possible a, a curse will be laid on all of his people because um, the stars, we should thank for what they give us. The magic, the light, and uh, a nighttime companion. Uh, instead, the stars, they have their secrets. And they are theirs, give or to deny. This young elf boy is demanding the secret of the star. This could be very dangerous. Yes, it could. The rules here on Elf Elfland are far mm -hmm. different than what I'm used to. I have always thought it strange in other places how people do not become friends with the stars and sing with them, dance. Perhaps we could um, be begin the conversation anew. Um, and help the, lung, the the young lad out. Yes, let let's try to help him. All right. Um, I come up to uh, the the young elf and uh, say uh, greetings. We are, uh, we have traveled uh, far away from Elfland 
some of us are not from Elfland. Have you met, uh, have you met the star that you speak to? The boy looks down upon you from his branch, and he says, Greetings! Yes, I've been arguing with him for the past few days. He refuses any name I give him, I and every time he threatens to burn me. Oh, and you have offered your name over to the star? Yes. Oh. I have given my name to him several times. And he does not believe that we elves can curse anything. Hmm. He... He... Does not believe that I can curse him from the sky. And do you believe that he can burn you? Yes, I do, but it's important for all stars to have names. Like Mother named that one off towards the sun. And he, point, he points to where the sun would be, and just off to the side you see this brightly glowing purple star. She named it after the queen and her cold, cold heart. Ah, the cold heart but this, of the queen. But this one's... Yeah. She named it the Frosty One, and it gladly accepted as it watches over all of what those Frost Elves do in their domain with great pleasure. Who is your mother? Oh, yes. My mother. She... He, uh... It hesitates for a second and says, she lives off that way. And he points off the road down, down what looks like a, like a, I would say a dirt path, not even a dirt road. It looks like a uh, hiking trail that's heading east off the road. Oh, okay. We, we live down that way, just at the edge of the swamp. Would you like to meet her? Yes. I would. Yes. Let's do it. Now we get them away from the star. Yeah. Um, the star twinkles out as the kid jumps down off of his tree and... He begins leading you. Wait, does the star... It, uh, it twinkles out when we leave? Yes, it twinkles out okay. finally. Gotcha. Maybe <laughs> happily to have a break from this annoying child. And uh, yeah, he takes you to... Through... Or sorry, through the dirt path or hiking trail and... Uh, Yes. Going towards the swamp. At the edge, um, as you go, go closer and closer, you almost begin to lose your way past the main path as the kid always stops and waves you along further. And uh, as soon as you guys make it to the end of the trail, the uh, boy disappears. He goes behind a tree saying, hurry up, it's just this way. And then he, he vanishes. Cricket proceeds to uh. grab the naggy nata. Mm, this doesn't seem right. Komak is looking for the trail back, like, trying not to get lost. Yes. It seems perhaps we have fallen for a sylvan, uh, a sylvan trick. Just off of the wasting swamps. And, uh, 
Let's see. Let's see what our two local elves know of this place. You know that in the long past, it w this place was where discarded memories and banished witches used to roam. And also misbegotten fae. What's it called again? Um, the Wasting Swamps. Or also known as the Defiled Dreglands. By some. Um, I suppose we must try to find our way back to the road, recover from this. Yeah. This trickery. Yes. Yeah. You guys can try. You uh, follow the trail back as far as you can. And soon, uh, you find yourself wandering in circles as you pass the same tree a few times and also see your footprints. Every time you come back to the same area where the boy disappeared, no matter how far back on the road you go. Can we see the castle? No. Uh, oh, okay. The light has darkened around here as you get thicker into the woods. And everything but trees. Um, everything that you could see is blocked by the thick canopy. You want to smell like gold nearby? Ooh. Yeah. Or okay. gems. Yes, I'm sure you do. Um, you smell some further in, oh. uh, into the swamps. Oh, I smell gold down in that swamp somewhere. I don't think we want to go in there, though, unless... That's where his mother is, right? Unless there's no other way. Um, a very what handy said. thing. Yeah, that you have, that you that you can detect that. It seems that uh, we only go in circles. This may be our only option for now. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So you guys are moving further into the swamp? Yeah. Real like it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And um, so you do, following your nose towards the gold, you take the driest path through the swamp. So your boots and leggings do get soaked. Um, it takes you about an hour to get to where you're going, where the gold smells the strongest. And what you see is a lowly watchtower in the middle of a bog. It's a wooden, or old rotted wooden, um, like bridges connecting it to dry patches here and there. And what you see are ghosts. Ghosts, uh, elven ghosts, in armor, carrying swords and shields. Some of them arrow, uh, bow and arrows, and others are crossbows. And they shoot into the swamp, as if replaying a memory over and over, trapped in a loop. They take no notice, no matter how close you get. No, we're, yeah, all right. They just, they take no notice as you guys got as close as you did. Time is broken here. Okay. 
Should we climb the tower? Maybe it'll give us a, a view of the uh, be of the surroundings. If time's broken here, we could possibly slip into that time. So we have to move with caution, from what I can tell. Yes. Hey. Maybe one of us should climb the tower, and not all of us. Yeah. And I, I feel like it should be either Fenric or myself, being the elves, we're the most likely to uh, survive any issue without consequence. But can you climb without equipment, for goodness sakes? To minimize the amount of waste needed to touch. I have some equipment. I have, um... Uh, rope and grappling hook. Yeah, same. Well, yeah, yeah, both. I do have it too, but if you want to minimize the amount of destruction possible... Iron spikes. Which disturbing at least amount, I would say, depending on how tall the tower is, I could just straight up climb it. Hmm. Oh yeah, aren't you like really good at yeah. climbing? Yeah, but my armor does weigh me down a smidge bit. Well, time is both against us and on our side here. Maybe you could take your armor off. Yeah. <laughs> uh... How tall does the tower look like? Um, it's not a big tower. It's probably about 100 feet high and 30 feet wide. It's more like a small, like... It's, it's like a uh, small, like, little post where a few men here or there would sit and just watch the road on any normal plane. Not made well, for that. Well, here's a bit of a problem. If I get my armor off, then, of you course, get, attacked. get it. Well, depending if there's a window at 60 feet, I mean, a entry window at 60 feet, I can get us at least that far up and be able to send down at least some rope. Do you take my rope and like tie them together or something? Because I do want to minimize the amount of damage we cause by using grappling hooks. But I can at least get us get 60 feet into one of the windows if someone is willing to temporarily hold on to my armor. Us talking like that is like proceeding to unbuckle with some of the like sidearm things and stuff. I mean, not, not to burst everybody's amazing climbing the tower idea here. You could just go through the front door. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it could rift. cause us to go into a rift without us noticing. That is true. That is true. Okay, That's it might why anyway. I was suggesting. Yeah, it might happen anyway, which is why I was suggesting that one of the two elves actually be the one to scout it. They might never come back in our, our in our perspective. But if time is broken, that means the tower itself, even though it shows very decent size, the inside can be a complete maze that is bigger. You never know. Never trust Rick. buildings. Well, I, I put it to a vote. Do we send one, or do we all go together? I vote we just go in. Yeah, yeah I agree. We got my hood up. We piece up the arm pieces and then proceeds to fiddle with putting them back on. <laughs> <laughs> and we can help uh, with can that. someone help me with a latch in yeah, the back I'll shoulder help. area? Bends down. <laughs> Jumps up squats and tries down to... is more like it. Yeah. 
All right. And you guys make your approach. Um, none of the ghosts pay attention. You see them do battle inside the water, outside the water on the bridges and everywhere else. You all is silent though. The silent screams, the sword clashes. There's about at least 50 ghosts here in a never ending battle amongst themselves. I see ghosts on top of the watchtower raining spectral arrows into the crowds. And another at the door blowing a horn, either calling for reinforcements or uh, calling for a treat. But again, no one pays attention to you as you pass around and through the ghost. And into the watchtower you go. Um, see, there was a map here. Yeah, right here. Um, that doesn't help. Inside, you actually see undead, non ghosts, but undead knights sitting at tables writing letters and others polishing swords. Um, there is a, a, a torch lit on this base floor, um, lighting up the room with the drab gray and brown of the stone and the wood. Um, the stairs leading upwards seem decayed and some are actually cracked and broken in places. Um, the rest of the floor, though, there is about six um, un a zombie knights. Yeah, you can do just, I'll just call them zombie knights. Sitting around either penning letters, uh, polishing armor, or poli uh, sharpening their blades as if they're preparing to go to battle at any moment. <laughs> the bottom floor is about... It's kind of cramped. It's about 30 feet. Uh, maybe, maybe 25 feet with all the shelves and the table and everything for a uh, walking space. And everything is coated in a layer of dust and mold and moss. Oh, we'll try to sneak by, see if they'll just leave us be. Yeah, you you can walk right past them. They don't pay attention. Some of them look up and see you, nod, and then go back to doing what they're doing. Fascinating. Yeah, I suppose we can continue up at least the tower to see what we can see yeah. from around us. Yeah. Uh, going up the stairs. Uh, going up the stairs, there's maybe four or five floors. Um, most of them are either little draw, uh, stop point with um, kill holes in the sides. A two are of like sleeping quarters for about four to five men each. Um, the last floor before the top, though, consists of a small room with a desk and a chair and a small cot to one side. Presumably where the captain would rest. There is a ghost sitting at that table writing something on a, on a scroll. Maybe a letter to the king or queen. Or who knows. And then uh, you guys are at the top. Can we see where he's driving? Yeah, you can go over there and read it. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Uh, also curious. 
Yeah, you go through and, uh, or, yeah, you go around and step around him and look over his shoulder, and he's actually writing about something about a disagreement between the king and queen of Elfland. And how they promise to finish the fight for the sake of honor. And that even though the queen's elves are still out there, undying, so too are the king's men here. They are not, neither is still in the form in which they had began their lives. But they all remember, but all they remember is that their liege commanded them to be victorious. No matter the cost. And so they fought here for an indeterminate amount of time. Over this destroyed watchtower in the middle of a swamp. That has probably been forgotten. Um, for probably centuries. Perhaps we could offer to send a report to his liege. And uh, if they would just send us in the right direction and on the right way. Uh, then we can uh, take his missive to the king himself. Yeah, maybe put them to rest. Yes. Maybe, but how do you get a ghost's attention who's... He doesn't even um, uh, register that you're there. Indeed. Let me see what kind of magic we have. Match. Uh, it'd be. Uh, oh dang it! It'd be like Big B's magical snap fingers. Plus plus. Um. And I still can't feel. The power or presence of the King of Elfland, right? It's still f vague. Yeah, it's still pretty vague. It's very faint. But, I will say it has grown a little bit stronger the closer you've uh, gotten to the castle. Alright. Um, let's see. I don't really have any magic that could help with this. What kind of items do I have? Hmm. Is there uh, anything else in the room, or just is that it? Um, that's probably the only thing of note. There's an old rotted bed to one side. There's not one uh, thing inside the desk, or uh, you can take a look through the desk. Let's yeah. see. Is four golden leaves. Hey. A small mithril dagger. Ooh. And upon the bookshelf that is nearby, besides all the worn and um, eaten and molded books from the dampness and of the swamp, um, there is. Uh, what the heck are they called? The, uh, there's about six more of those. Oh, what the heck are they called? The, the cold arrows. The frost touch oh. arrows. The, uh, elf shot? The elf shot, yes. I was gonna call them the, the fey arrows, but that was not right. Well, more arrows from Lobica. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Is he uh, still here? Ooh. Oh yeah, you're still here. Um. Okay, and there's no hatch to. I, I, yeah, I don't know how we could try to get his attention. Um. I don't think we we're gonna take those gold leaves, right? Yeah, I have the bag of gold leaves. Oh, you added those? Okay. I can try a word of command. Yeah. 
now on this disfavor, on a new day, this all resets, right? Your yeah. spells, I think they do. Because what yeah. it says is it's based on the number of failed rolls that day. So you just roll to other disfavor, right? No, your disfavor increases each time that you you roll a failure. Right. But when you come to a new day, well, what it says is I guess it goes back to one. Oh, really? Oh. Huh. Hmm. Because it says based on the number of failed checks on this day. Okay. I was like, man, how do I get out from underneath this? It's like a vice. <laughs> Pretty vicious. But I can try a word of command to maybe get his attention? I don't know. The other ones seem to notice this. I don't know why he wouldn't. <laughs> it seems like the zombies noticed you. The ones still made of flesh and bone, but the ghosts did not. Mm. He probably wouldn't hear me either. <laughs> Are there any books or um, emotional items in here? Um, pictures, keepsakes, something like that? Um, all the pictures have been worn out over time and so have the books. But, let me actually, let me see. Nearby on the desk near the ghost is a golden quill. It looks as if it's the same one that he's writing in his ghostly visage. Okay. We'll try to write him a note. Like Captain, faithful servant of the King of Elfland, Arkin. Yeah, that seems to have gotten his attention. He looks at the uh, the scroll or paper that you've written on and reads. Uh, and then the other looks up and for once seems to register that you all are standing inside of his room. Greetings, the only Captain. He smiles and greet uh greets you, but his voice falls silent. Um, every word that he says, is as if, it's as if he's mute. Uh, you're not. You, uh, you and your men have, uh, have done well. But I regret to inform you that the unseely court, the, the winter court, that have seized the king and his daughter and, and um, cast them into a prison. And they now rule over Elfland and imperil the mortal world, casting off any bonds of friendship that elves across the many worlds have ever had to mortals. So, we are on a quest to free the king and to restore his rightful rule. We need your help to escape the swamp and to point us toward the palace where the queen has imprisoned the king and his daughter. Can you show us by a guiding star, or uh, by a tall hill, or any other means from here, how we might make it out of the this this wasting swamp, um, and then your duty can then be put to rest finally. You can see him grimace at the word of the queen taking over the court. And then at the end of your words, as he collects himself, he nods. And uh, 
He sits back down for a moment and uses his quill to write a note. A letter um, with directions and a word of advice, which we'll get to in a second. Um, he says that uh, if you go to the top of the tower and look north, you see mountains. Um, past the mountains, you will get to a clearing, a meadow. And just beyond the meadow lies the true castle. The, the castle near this swamp is a, is a is a farce, an illusion to set those who seek ill will towards the king of Elfland into a trap amongst a mighty black dragon named Dietrich, the unruly who governs these swamps in in uh uh, he uh, gives safe passage to all those beings who dwell within the swamp in exchange for gold and gems and other valuable artifacts. He says that though it may take some time, he will go to the other watchtowers who uh, have fellow soldiers first to live as long as he has and his men and gather them and set forth to the castle that it will take some time so he's saying that beyond the mountains there's a meadow and past that there's a castle but that castle is fake that's the real one i'm sorry the one we're again, at right now is the fake one yeah the one near the swamp is fake, but that meadow has a real one. Ah, okay. So any moment a dragon can come by. There was a black dragon at one of them, apparently the fake one. Dietrich the Unruly? Gomac is like, I want to go there. Dragon horde, anyone? Haha. <laughs> oh. Well, I think that it sounds like that that castle is actually meant. It sounds like that was actually meant in service to the king of Elfland. So. I would like to defeat yeah. the black dragon. So, does this mean we can't get out of the swamps by this magic? Is that what's sending us in circles unless we go to the black dragon? Mm, the ghost hesitates and for a few moments and then he writes again he said uh no knowing the true path now shall lead you out of the swamp where you go after that is up to you okay. uh, what befell you and your party was merely a minor setback for the uh, set for the unseelie when they entered the swamp okay so um, would you all rather head to the north, to the mountains, to continue on our way? Or do you want to try to entreat with this dragon? We don't have... Uh, wait, some of you all do have a lot of money, actually. Yes. So, Not on me. I'm one of the people who actually have a decent amount. I have a, a decent amount, but it's all back... <laughs> I guess you got oh, those gold leaves. We got what six gold leaves now. <laughs> I do yeah. have the leaves. I do have the leaves. Yeah, we got four more uh, just now. Do you have? Doesn't your whole one shirt double gold weight? Yes, but oh. since the leaves are not gold. Yeah, it doesn't affect them because. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, they'll turn into gold coins. That's why I left all my regular gold back behind when we left the staircase, um, because it is weighted extra. Can we see what's on the top floor? 
Uh, yeah. Um, he points up and um, the ghost actually leads you out and up to the final floor, which is just stairs leading up into a hatch. Okay. And we go through the hatch and we see the mountains he talks about. Yeah, you guys open up the hatch and you're standing on the very top of this watchtower. And to the north are snow-capped mountains to the north. And to the west of that, back, you can see the road. And following the road with your gaze, it goes eastward. Almost cutting maybe a hundred, maybe a hundred yards from where you guys were, or are. And it heads towards a, a large castle um, near the edge of this swamp. And what, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to talk to the black dragon or do you want to continue on the way? I mean, I think talking to the dragon is going to be... You yeah, know, what? If he's on the king's side, maybe he'll help us. Yeah, I mean, it certainly can't hurt to talk to him. Um... I mean, well, I, I no, shouldn't he could say that, us, but for sure. <laughs> yeah, he I could think... help us more than hurt us. As long as we don't try it's to steal the stuff. Do. The only thing I would—that's what I was trying to say. We we don't we don't really need his help now. We can just like head straight to the mountains and be on our way. Um, I think uh, it seems to me like it'd be more like. A, just for fun, because <laughs> we want to talk to a dragon. I mean, Skomak really but, was excited about the dragon. <laughs> but also, he might be willing to help us take down the queen, since he works for the king. Out of character, I'm terrified of the dragon. It is a black dragon. Yeah. Well, but Skomak is like, I want to fight it. And evil, yeah. If you all have money, then... Um, I think it's going to act like a troll. It's going to say, hey, you don't get to get out of here unless you give me money. That's what he just said. But we do have money, mm -hmm. right? I think that's 1,200. That's quite a bit. I am down either way. Both sound very interesting. Probably so the tower four. only had uh, three floors? It's about four, four semi-large floors. Oh, no, we didn't miss anything there. No, just like old, decaying, rotted, non-interesting, like sleeping chambers oh. and. Okay, not. we got all the good stuff. We convinced the dragon to take us to the castle. Huh? That's too. what I was thinking. Oh. Take the eagles to Mordor. Yeah. That could be quite a pricely fee if you think about that. Yeah. And due to how many years it probably has passed, the. The Great Beast might actually be more on the grouchier side. If it doesn't like the Queen, then it might help us for free. Yes, but high chance we're going to probably have to do some form of fake contract with it. We could eat the Queen if it really dislikes her that much. Just a guess. Yeah, let's go to the dragon. That's my choice. I I agree. Let I I I want to go to the dragon and right. at least try. <laughs> what do you think, Ron? To convince it to help us. We go to the dragon. I mean, I'm down. Uh, yes. Yeah, it sounds Since interesting. we're going to the dragon, then. Um, I probably need to call it there for the night, too. Yeah, we'll call it here for tonight. Yeah, it's time. 